Hi and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about amines, drawing them, naming them and reactions of amines. So without further ado, amines are like organic derivatives of ammonia. So ammonia is NH3 and the difference between them for a primary amine what we've done is we've replaced one of those hydrogens on the ammonia with a carbon chain. For a secondary amine, we've replaced two hydrogens with carbon chains, and for a tertiary amine, we've replaced all three hydrogens with carbon chains. Now, you should be able to recognise all types of amines, but you only need to be able to name primary amines. So, how do we name primary amines? Well, there are actually two possible ways to name them. We can either name them as amino something or other, amino alkane, so for example, two amino propane, or something or other, amine, so for example, propane to amine. You should always number the amine group except on methane and ethane chains, because there are multiple different, um, there are multiple different positions that the amine group could be at. Okay, so if we consider um, amines. Really to start thinking about amines we need to start by thinking about ammonia and so this is a molecule of ammonia. Now to make a primary amine what we end up doing is we react the ammonia with a halo alkane and a substitution reaction occurs where one, car one hydrogen gets replaced by a carbon chain of some description. So I'm going to make this one an ethyl group. What length carbon chain it would be is going to depend on what your halo alkane was to start with. And so that would become a primary amine. Primary because there's only one carbon chain connected to that nitrogen atom. If we took this thing and we reacted it with another halo alkane, we could react or replace a second hydrogen with a alkane chain. Maybe this time we have a three carbon chain this time. It could be whatever length. They could all be the same, they could all be different, doesn't matter. They are still, in this case, a secondary alkane. Secondary because we have two different carbon chains connected to the single nitrogen. Now, once you get to something complicated like this, you don't need to be able to name it, but you should still be able to recognize it as a secondary amine. And if we continue and we replace the third carbon chain again with another carbon chain, so the third hydrogen with another carbon chain, then that gives us our tertiary amine. However, let's just simplify matters and we will go back to a primary amine because we want to name it. So have a look at that, we'll put that hydrogens back on. For naming a primary amine it is quite straightforward. We are looking at the longest carbon chain as always. Here we go, three carbons long, and so we would call that probe. The bonding between the carbon atoms is a single atom, single bonds I should say, and so we can use AN. Now, this is where things get slightly interesting. There are two possible ways we can name this. They both, however, have propan in their name because they both have, they're both representing a compound that has three carbons with single bonds between them. So the two ways we could do it, propan 1 amine, okay, so it is a propane chain and there is an amine group on carbon 1, or 1 amino propane. So you can think of the amino as a side chain. Both of those are acceptable at NCEA, although the top one, this one 
is actually the IUPAC approved name. I don't know why they allow the second one, but they do. We're not going to go there. Okay, so as mentioned previously, we make amines from the substitution of a halo alkane with concentrated alcoholic ammonia. So we start off with that concentrated alcoholic ammonia, we add our halo alkane, and that basically replaces one hydrogen from the amine with a carbon chain. If we have two, uh, sorry, if we start off with a primary amine and we add a halo alkane to it, we get a secondary amine. And if we start with a secondary amine and we add a halo alkane, we're going to get a tertiary amine. Okay, so one of the most important things about amines is that they are bases. Just like ammonia, that nitrogen atom can accept a proton, which then forms what we call an alkyl ammonium salt, which has a positive charge. Now these are weak bases, just like our carboxylic acids are weak, weak acids, because they only partially react with water or dissociate. Um, and of course, as for any base, they react with acids forming salts. Okay, so amines are bases, which means by definition that they will accept a proton from water. What that means is that one proton from water can jump onto that nitrogen. This is a weak base, so it's an equilibrium reaction, okay, which means it does not go to completion, it is only a partial reaction. And what we get as a product, or products really, is we get our alkyl ammonium cation. plus a hydroxide ion. Now, to name these things, it's not as bad as you think. Well, maybe it is, I don't know. But this one here, I would always call ethanamine. Okay, F because there's two carbons and because there's a single bond between them, amine because it's an amine group. This thing here, is going to be known as ethyl ammonium ion. Okay, ethyl again because there's two carbons. So that's what we're talking about with those. So this is how amines act as bases, and that is probably the most important reaction to be aware of with amines. We don't tend to deal with much else, although we can react these with acyl chlorides to make amides, which I will talk about in a later video. Okay, so thanks for your attention.